In 2015, Obama told NPR uh, by 2027, Iran's breakout time to build a bomb would be near zero. Watch this. What is uh, a, a more relevant fear would be that in year 13, 14, 15, they have advanced centrifuges that can enrich uranium fairly rapidly. Mm -hmm. And at that point, the breakout times would have shrunk almost down to zero. Hmm. According to former Israeli Prime Minister Bibi Netanyahu, Obama was right. But this new deal is actually worse. He warned this deal is much closer to that time frame. It gives Iran two years where they can develop the added enrichment capacity of uranium. Meanwhile, Iran's President Ibrahim Razi held a news conference today warning there will be no agreement if inspectors continue to investigate undeclared uranium sites in that region. Joining me now is Newsmax columnist, former Pennsylvania congressional candidate and executive director of Iranian Americans for Liberty, Brian Leib. Also with us is retired Navy captain, former Pentagon advisor, foreign policy expert, and author of The Fifth Horseman and The New Mad, Dr. Harlan Ullman. Welcome to you both. First question is to you, Thanks. Mr. Leib. Uh, Obama himself admitted that the JCPOA would make Iran a nuclear power. Those with the most to lose are warning that Joe Biden's deal is far worse. What are you hearing? Well, I think it's very telling, Chris, that you have Israeli politicians from every side of the political aisle, uh, left, center, right, far right, far left, that are all coming together with a united message uh, to signal to President Biden that they are not in support of this deal. Uh, and that they are going to do whatever they need to do to safeguard the future of Israel. Very rarely do you have Israeli politicians agreeing on anything. So the fact that every single one of them uh, in, uh, in, in unison are, are voicing their displeasure in this deal, I think, tells you uh, how not just Israel, but also how the world feels as well. Um, Iran, uh, Tehran has never stopped uh, threatening and going after America, Israel, and their Gulf uh, Arab countries, and uh, I don't have any reason to believe they're ever going to stop doing that. They're a malign terrorist regime that has never changed their calling card once, and I just don't understand why the leader of the free world continues to engage in diplomacy. Right. Well, Mr. Ullman, uh, meanwhile, Israel can't even get Joe Biden on the telephone. What's your reaction uh, to all of this? Well, first, if you read the original Joint Comprehensive Plan of Action, if it were followed by all sides, make assumption, Iran would never get a nuclear weapon, period. Now, you could argue that they'd violate the agreement. That's fine. But if they abided by it, they would never get a weapon. Now we're at a very difficult time. I do not know what's in the new agreement. But if that agreement does not work, and I do not believe Iran will go to the point of building a bomb for a number of reasons, but obviously they could have the capacity to do it in a very short time. So the only way out of this conundrum is to see if there's going to be an agreement which can be enforced, and that surveillance goes back in. If the agreement is not reached, we have a huge problem, because obviously we can't tolerate Iran having a nuclear weapon, but the question is, what do we do about it? So this is a very serious issue. Right. If I can make one other point, I think well, it's remain here. I, well, just Mr. Ullman, just really quickly, I did read the JCPOA, and one of the problems with it was it al allowed all the nuclear infrastructure to remain in place. It allowed all the nuclear material to be kept in an oxide, which was easily enriched on site, on premises. And then, as you saw Mr. Obama admit, there was going to be a breakout period at the end of 10 years. And they could also continue to develop intercontinental ballistic missile technology while the ban on fissile material was going on. So there was it, it was it was a danger from the word go. And Mr. Ullman, I want to pick up on something uh, a little different away from Iran. It's been a year since Mr. Biden's botched Afghanistan withdrawal. According to a new documentary, a U.S. Army colonel turned away four busloads of 300 orphans, Americans, and Christians, leaving them to certain death at the hands of the terrorist Taliban after ordering them off the Kabul airport during that chaotic withdrawal we saw a year ago. Women's rights are now back in the Stone Age under Taliban rule. Vladimir Putin saw the disaster as proof of Democrats' weakness and stupidity, yep. prompting him to invade Ukraine, by all accounts. As we mark the one-year anniversary of the worst foreign policy defeat for the United States in the modern era, how can anybody defend that Afghan withdrawal? Well, first of all, nobody can defend it. The last word on the JCPOA, permanent surveillance was going to be there along with inspection. So I think that there was a, an opportunity to have some degree of confidence. However, look. I finished writing my book a year ago, and as you know, the theme is massive attacks of disruption. 
What's happened is that the international situation and the domestic situation have deteriorated far more than I anticipated. And so there's a new MAD, M-A-D-D, -D, for Massive Attacks of Disruption and Destruction. And the worst acts of MAD may be here in the United States because our political process is broken, as this discussion has shown. Both political parties see the other as evil. There's no way we're going to have conventions of civility. And that, to me, is a national tragedy. And I just don't see how that's going to be fixed immediately. Well, I, I'm, I'm kind of with you. Uh, it seems that uh, my political opponents, and as they call me enemies, uh, they don't want to adhere to the Constitution of the United States anymore. And that I, I would agree with you, Mr. Ullman. That is a problem. Mr. Lee, do you want to comment on Afghanistan? Well, we're, we're looking at the situation in, in Afghanistan, but I think it's also worth talking, Chris, about the rapidly destabilizing situation that's happening in Baghdad right now. Uh, as of a couple hours ago, uh, we saw uh, American helicopters that were starting to evacuate Americans from our embassy in Baghdad. Um, and it's very clear to see what's happening in the Middle East. When there's a lack of American leadership and when the Iranian regime is unchecked and allowed to do what they do, this is the things that's going to happen. They're, they stay, they and the Taliban st stood to benefit the most uh, from the Afghanistan withdrawal. Uh, and now, as we're on the verge of what looks to be a, a civil war happening in Iraq, you better believe that the IRGC in Tehran and the moles in Iran are going to benefit the most from that. And it's happening again. This is happening on Joe Biden's watch, Chris. Brian Leib and Harlan Ullman. Thank you, gentlemen. Appreciate the debate. We appreciate it.